Mike Molino here alongside Marvin is on. No Nick Quagley this week, but Mike and Marvin here holding it down for you. Another edition of Patriots Roundtable. And Marv, we're sitting at entering week nine of the NFL season. Yeah. And after four weeks, the Patriots are sitting at 500, four and four. And I don't know if this is what most people expected. I don't think anybody really had any huge expectations. Um, I think for the most part, when you look at this team uh, coming out of the uh, offseason, you just wanted to find success and call success being that the Patriots make the playoffs. Nothing nothing too crazy, nothing too wild, but you just were hoping to see that the Patriots can make the playoffs. And sitting at 4-4 four and four right now at this point in the season, they're not completely out of the picture. Um, but they still have an opportunity to be a team that 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 cracks the playoffs and and making make, in, make uh, some noise there. So, you know, what are your thoughts and feelings as to where this Patriots team is right now after eight weeks of the NFL season? Yeah, when you when you look at this Patriots um, season, when you look at our predictions, you Nick and I, I think we all had the Patriots being a playoff caliber team. Now, as the season progressed. It wasn't really looking like that, right? There was there was times where you looked at this team and said, "There's there's some flaws, offensive line. You can't run. The defense wasn't wasn't able to stop the run. It was looking real shaky. Mac Jones is not being able to throw the ball. He still got Josh McDaniels making these horrendous play calls. Brandon Bolden is still running the ball on third and short for God knows what reason why. But there's life now." There's honestly some life. Patriots finally beat a playoff caliber team, which they weren't able to do so far. You had the Bucks, you were so close. You had the Cowboys, you were so close. You lost to the horrendous Miami Dolphins team. And now, you know, you finally get the Chargers. And this was the, this was the time you needed to right the ship after beating the lowly Jets, facing the Chargers. And now... You got these, what, next three games are winnable games. You have Panthers, I believe, coming up next. The Falcons, and I'm missing one other team. Browns, I believe. Browns. I think Browns is in the middle. So I think it's Panthers, Browns, Falcons. Am I correct? Panthers, Browns, Falcons. Yep. You got the Panthers, Browns, and Falcons. Listen, man. Patriots can go on a little run here. One thing, a lot of things have changed so far throughout this season one thing mike is the offensive line patriots might have finally found i said it last week but it was against the jets so it didn't really hold so much weight but now when you're looking at this offensive line they've been able to keep um mac jones upright no mac didn't have the greatest game against the um the los angeles chargers but I like what I'm seeing from this line, how they finally seem to have some cohesiveness going on. And I think that's the game changer right there. Ted Karras, Isaiah Wynn, Shaq Mason, Michael Onuunu, right there. And you got David Andrews in the center. They might have found something there, Mike. So I would just think this, having the offensive line keeping Mac Jones upright is letting the Patriots be more creative with their play calling now. Um, we see that Damian Dami Harris... He's 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 their he's their guy. He's their guy right now. As long as he can stay healthy, Patriots have been able to move the chains with him. And every then who else is going to be the second running back? It's been a revolving door week by week. Sometimes <laughs> Stevenson gets it. Sometimes you might even see JJ Taylor. Brandon Bolden's been a consistent force, and Josh McDaniel loves to use him. But Damien Harris says the guy, the offensive line has been better. And I think that's been the reason why the Patriots have been able to write this ship. Yeah, I mean, they're on a little bit of a roll now. You come off of that game where you totally, you know, destroy the Jets. And I mean, I know you guys probably talked about this in the last episode. And I know people have had conversation left and right. But I don't think a lot of people are holding much stock into that Jets game. Because like you said, it's the New York Jets. Everybody should beat the Jets. Um, But, you know, not to really go back too much on this Chargers game. But I think, uh, in my opinion, coming off the Jets game, you know, you couldn't ask for a greater day from your offense. They looked great. Coming off of the Chargers game, I I quite possibly think that's the great the best defensive game the Patriots have played all season. That's the best that the Patriots defense in my opinion has looked and it came against a quality uh contender in the Los Angeles Chargers. I think coming into that game, 
uh, I, w- I wouldn't say feared uh, Justin Herbert is the fear is the word I'd use, but you know, Justin Herbert is a pretty good quarterback in this league right now. And, you know, he has weapons out there with, with Mike Williams, with, with Keenan Allen, with Austin Eckler. He has guys that can make plays down the field. So, you know, I know a lot of people, including myself, worried that this Patriots defense would struggle against, you know, a, a pretty a pretty high-powered offense like the Chargers. But they held their own, kind of keeping Herbert in check, getting pressure on the quarterback, um, not letting, you know, big plays happen down the field to, to Mike Williams. They had definitely held him in check, I know for sure, thanks to fantasy football. And um, Keenan Allen, no, he he was involved, but for the most part, they held their own against the Chargers. And you know the Patriots could have put up more points on the board. You know they let oh, a this should have been a, it should have been a blowout if you really think about they it. They definitely left some meat on the bones in terms in terms of squandering some red zone opportunities. But you know I think defensively they did a hell of a job against that Chargers offense. And now, like I said, they're on a little bit of a roll. A roll. And you spoke about it right there with the teams coming up next. The Carolina Panthers, the Cleveland Browns, the Atlanta Falcons, those are three teams right there where the Patriots have an opportunity to beat these these teams. You know, Carolina started off hot, but kind of felt they've fallen off in the last couple of weeks. They didn't believe it. (laughs) Sam Darnold has come back down to earth a little bit. You know, not having McCaffrey hurts their offense, but, you know, Carolina Panthers are not the team that they were to start the year. Cleveland Browns, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what's the status of Baker Mayfield. Is he Baker, playing? Is ba- he not? Baker played. He played last week. Okay, so he's I'll in be- there, but he's definitely yeah. hobbled. Um, they don't have their their star running back in Nick Chubb. I don't know if he'll be back for week 10. Kareem Hunt's also dealing with injury. Uh, I know uh, Landry, Jarvis Landry's dealing with injury, and Odell Beckham Jr. is back, but he's – yeah, Zero factor not, in that offense. No, no, no Dell backup. <laughs> so yeah, and then Atlanta Falcons. I just think the Patriots are in the Atlanta Falcons' head and in Matt Matt Ryan's head, just still from that Super Bowl victory a couple of years ago. But Mark, I tell you this: a week ago, before before week eight, I'd probably say, "Well, Tennessee Titans, geez, that that offense, King Henry is something to be worried about." Yeah, there's no King Henry anymore. Yeah, it's it's looking like he's out for what six to ten weeks. Six to ten <laughs> weeks. So he definitely won't be in that week uh twelve, I believe it's week twelve. Week twelve matchup when the Patriots take on the Tennessee Titans at Gillette Stadium. And we could it. quite quite possibly looking at a team that could be eight and four after week week twelve. I don't want to ah jump listen, to any crazy conclusions. Listen, what AJ Brown a bad man. Tannehill can still throw the ball and be creative. You got Julio there, who's probably going to be healthier by that time. Titans are going to figure it out. I mean, Patriots will have a chance. We saw what they did against the Chargers. We've seen what they've done against playoff caliber teams. They've either been close or they've they've given their best. So, so Tennessee is going to is not going to be able to roll over the Patriots. Also, losing Derrick Henry hurts. And I know we're looking we're looking ahead, like we're, we're skipping three teams by talking about this, but. It, it makes Derrick Henry being hurt makes things interesting for the exactly. AFC. And so, because t- Titans were looking really good. Kansas City not being Kansas City has really made AFC very interesting. At times, you're thinking it's the Ravens. Then you see the Ravens get beat by the Bengals bad. Then you're like, you're looking at the Bengals team, you're like, oh, Bengals look pretty damn good. Then they go and lose to the uh, to Mike White in the Jets. Who? And so, like the AFC, wide open. The uh, other than the Bills, who look like the the constant team, Bills are the probably the only team in the AFC where I don't see a part in special teams, offense, and defense where they have a weakness. Yeah, they're, they're I mean, a real solid team in the AFC. There's not many of that in the AFC. The NFC, there's a couple teams I can look at and be like, okay, they they they're they're fully united. You got the Buccaneers. I don't see weakness in offense, defense, special teams. I mean, defense is not the greatest, but they're solid there for Buccaneers. Um, who else? Green Bay, solid on all, all three fronts. Who Rams. else am I missing? Cardinals, solid on all three fronts. I feel like I'm missing one more. Rams. Los Angeles just got just got some Rams. firepower. 
before they even got Von Miller, <laughs> they were solid in all three fronts. So AFC is open. AFC is real open when it comes to um, who can make a stand. And I, and I wanted the Giants to beat Kansas City so bad because Patriots are in the hunt for the playoffs still. Kansas City is in the hunt for the playoffs. You don't want to, you don't want to go in a race neck and neck with Kansas City, no matter what. I understand that they haven't looked the greatest, but at the end of the day, that's still Patrick Mahomes. And as the season goes on, who knows what magic they can still contend with while they still have Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey healthy. AFC's definitely looking wide open. And I mean, there's a lot of thing with a lot of a lot of football left to be played. You know, especially in the AFC, you don't know where things can can go and how things can unfold. Wild card question for you, loading up, Marv. No, so, <laughs> this could be crazy, but I'm gonna ask it because you know we have all types of conversations on roundtable. Mac Jones. First, let me ask you this: Is he? He's the best out of the rookie quarterback starting. Is he the best one? TBD. Okay. TBD because it's not – It's he's he's in the best situation. Mm-hmm. He's in the best situation. How, I, don't, I don't know how Justin Fields would, would work out if he was with the Patriots. I don't know what Trey Lance would look like if he was with the Patriots. He's, I'll tell you one thing, though. He's better than Zach Wilson. <laughs> he's better than Zach Wilson. Um, I think that was Trevor Lawrence, if he was with the Patriots, Think he do? I think he do pretty well. Think if Mac Jones was with the Jaguars, I don't know how well he'd be doing. So TBD. I like Mac Jones. I think he, you know, all the talks was he was NFL ready, and he proved it. He proved he was NFL ready. Patriots were comfortable enough of letting go Cam Newton and giving him the reins. Um, it's possible that he could be the best out the bunch, but it's too early still to determine that. So then is it also too early or is it not too early? Is it possible to throw Mac Jones's name in the hat for offensive rookie of the year? I mean, you can throw it in there. He's not going to win. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a guy called Jamar Chase. Ah, <laughs> Jamar yeah. Chase is going to win the offensive rookie of the year. You know what I'm saying? This guy, but there's still a lot of time left. Jamar Chase is about to break records. Mac Jones, let's hope he can get Patriots into the playoffs. I know usually these these awards favor quarterbacks. Jamar Chase is <laughs> he's about to break a record, right? That his old teammate Justin Justin Jefferson broke. Think I think is I think his is sealed and delivered. Mac Jones probably will be in the running for it, possibly even second place. But I think Jamar Chase is the clear cut winner right now. If the season right was now. To end today, if the season was to end today, Jamar Chase is a clear cut winner. Now, if Mac Jones goes on a crazy run here, like he didn't like Patriots won last week, right? No one's talking about Mac Jones and, and how Mac Jones Mac Jones didn't have a good game. He didn't have a great game. The some great games that he had. Patriots didn't win, and they haven't really unleashed him yet. We've seen the potential of Mac Jones, but we haven't seen him being able to be himself for four full quarters to give him that offensive rookie of the year. It's, and most, most of the success for Mac Jones right now in his early career is going to be the success of Bill Belichick. When I think about this Chargers win, I don't think of Mac Jones. I think, oh, man, Bill Belichick constructed a great game plan to beat the Chargers. And that's going to happen to most teams. It happened to Brady. It's going to happen to most quarterbacks under a Bill Belichick team. You're not going to get the full credit that you deserve. Most players in general. Well, I think what you said is key. Right now, yeah, Jamar Chase is looking like the guy, especially if he continues on the trajectory that he's on. It's signed, sealed, and delivered that he would be offensive rookie of the year. But also look at Mac Jones and the fact that he has nine weeks left, nine games left. Um, and slowly but surely, they're starting. I, I feel as if they're starting to let him rock a little bit more, let him step back and do his thing a little more. If he found some consistency and gave us nine games where he's throwing 
between 200 and 50, 300 yards, average, averaging some uh, some yards in between that, and maybe can average close to three touchdowns a game. Maybe that's asking too much. <laughs> but if he was to be somewhere between 300, 250 and 300 yards a game and somewhere close to three touchdowns a game, now you're talking about a, a 21-year-old, 22-year-old quarterback doing something pretty pretty solid. And, yes, the team has to make the playoffs. I think that's that's for sure. But if you were to do something like that in his next nine games. That would take a lot, though. Now you're changing the whole offensive game plan of how the Patriots have been running. Yeah, they're, they're run heavy, and there's no reason – why they're necessarily going to shift completely from run heavy, especially how Damian Harris has been running the football. But we also know Mac Jones has an arm and he has weapons out there that can be relied, relied upon. That's a good question. Does he have great weapons? He, that are really, how, how many weapons does he really have? Well, some, some people feel as if, I'm still, I'm still, the jury's still out for me, but some people feel as if they're not utilizing the tight ends as best as possible. Hunter Henry is getting utilized in the red zone. We know that. John o. Smith is not doing much. John o. Smith, the opportunities that we've seen him in have not looked good. They haven't looked good. And whether you can talk about utilization, how they're using him, or he's just dropping passes. He hasn't been able. One thing about John Smith that I envisioned was similar. I don't know if we can even say this name, but similar to an Aaron Hernandez type of role where we're going to use him as a running back. We're going to use him in slants. And once he gets the ball, he's going to get a lot of yak. We haven't really seen that from John Smith yet. There's potential there, but we're eight weeks in. You spend a lot of money on him. Aguilar. His, Nothing his special. Best? Nothing special. Nothing special for Aguilar. Born, as you guys know on this show, I'm a big fan of. He got benched pretty much last game for after that fumble. He only played like 30% of the snaps. Jacoby Myers is, is Mac Jones's guy. But yes. Jacoby Myers, as we know, he's a nice wide receiver. He's very <laughs> limited. Yeah. He, he reliable hands. Reliable hands, you can use him in the third down, but you don't you don't get nothing spectacular from Jacoby. Yeah, his his spectacular rating on Madden would be pretty low. <laughs> um, solid solid wide receiver, and he makes the big catches. But I don't know. Hoping ho hopefully he gets a touchdown soon, so the, was, that <laughs> that narrative could go away. Yeah, but there was a few sightings of Nikhil Harry that last game too. There was, there was. I don't, I don't know if that should re we should be reading much into that, but they was on the field. They had some passes go to him. Could this be Nikhil rising from the ashes? But what would it take Saying for us? To, what would it take for us to see that? I mean, Nikhil would need to one stay on the beat field. Beat out. He would have to beat out what Kendrick Bourne. To get on the floor more, because at, at where, right now when they run three wide receivers is Bourne, Myers, and Aguilar. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It'd be tough for him unless an, an injury or something were to take place. I don't think Nikhil Harry can. I mean, the trade trade deadline is gone, right? So True. he's, he's a not great, going anywhere. He's a great security blanket right now if there is an injury that you know you have a Nikhil Harry who could potentially make a big play for you in a, in a big spot of the game. Like that's so it's not it's not the worst thing in the world to have Nikhil as yeah. long as he's healthy. And this isn't and this isn't Cam Newton, you know for for the most part Mac Jones can get him the ball. Right. Um Mac Jones is Pretty damn accurate. Well, I mean, he struggled in that Chargers game, but for the most part, he's shown that he's a pretty accurate quarterback and can get his his players the football. But you know, yeah, Nikhil Harry is definitely behind the depth chart. But there was some sightings of Nikhil Harry in that last game, so I mean, it remains to be seen how the rest of the season looks for him. Before we get out of here, question on Mac Jones. I just want to hear your thoughts. What do you think of him? outside of the field 
like when I watch his post game conference presses and when he's speaking, he's just a little too serious for me. Like he, I don't see any like, and I know the the players obviously rally around him and they really like him, but I just feel I get this vibe off of him like, damn man, relax, like put your shoulders down, just talk, speak. He's just very, he feels very uptight and sad, and I'm, maybe he's just his rookie, and he'll grow out of it. Tatum yeah. was kind of the same way when he was just a rookie. He would never look into the camera, and he'd be very soft spoken. But there's something about Mac. I don't know what it is yeah i see that and i think exactly what you said that i chalk it up to him right now just being he's, he's a kid he's 21 22 years old first first year in the league he's playing like this is a no he's not on a sorry ass team where it's just like oh well we're going out there and we'll see what right play for the new england patriots and he's playing under bill belichick like he doesn't want to make any mistakes nor does he want to say the wrong thing like I think at 22 years old, I, I believe he's 22, he's trying to walk the line as fine as possible and not do anything out of the ordinary, anything that might look a certain type of way that make people feel some type of, I don't know. Yeah, he seems serious, but I don't, like I feel like during the tra during training camp and, and whatnot, whether it was Cam Newton or a couple other guys, yeah. they spoke highly of like his personality and he him being like somewhat of a cool guy that's like, you know, one of the boys, like he's cool. But I think just being so young, when he gets put in front of the camera and the microphones and the media, he's just he just want to be do everything so right and correct and not cause any trouble to upset his coach, upset his teammates. He just wants to be right. And I think he'll come out of that with time. Um, I think that happens with a lot of young players in different leagues, you know, especially when the lights are really bright on you. Um, you know, you want to do everything so fine and right. But I think with, with in due time, you know, especially knowing that Mac Jones isn't going anywhere anytime soon for the New England Patriots. He'll come out of that, but it's just going to take time. I hear that. I hear that. I just want to see a little personality. Mad, mad robotic. <laughs> yeah, he's robotic. I mean, but he's playing pretty good. So yeah. if that's what it is right now and he's going to be like that, then it is what it is. But I also at the same time believe he'll come out of that with due time. Will it be this year? Maybe not. Will it be next year? I don't know, but assuming Mac Jones is going to be here for the foreseeable future, he'll come out of that. By the time he's hitting like 28, like there's no way he'll still be to get some damn facial hair on his on his chin <laughs> or something. It'll be a different Mac Jones, I believe. All right. But yeah, we can wrap it up here. This has been the Patriots Roundtable powered by CLNS Media. Mm -hmm.